So over the last few weeks, I've been doing a course from um, IDEO design company called Storytelling for Influence. Now, IDEO have uh, an American design company and they've started an online uh, sort of a university, which I think they were using to train some of their staff internally on storytelling and prototyping techniques and communication skills. Uh, and then they've decided to release this to the wider public because it's, um, it's really good. And uh, so it's an online course that you pay for. And um, I found it was really, really beneficial and really useful because I suppose through working in a bank in the last couple of years, I've adopted the same kind of business language and the same kind of approach to uh, drafting information and telling stories that the people around me were, were using as well, which is very direct, very informative, um, very detail-oriented, and very, obviously, business-like. That's not engaging, because engaging stories are about people. A person is a story. Um, tell me a story that doesn't involve a person. It's really difficult to think of one because all of the interesting stories that you know are about people. So when I was doing this course, I was still thinking of all the things that I wanted to say, all the stories that I wanted to tell, but they weren't really stories, they were just information that stakeholders and people that I work with uh, wanted to say and wanted to communicate to people. But communicating is a really weird word because delivering information is not communicating. Communicating means to commune, to have shared understanding. And to have shared understanding, you need a story that both of you relate to, both the storyteller and the, the audience listening to it, the person you're listening to this right now and you're relating to what I'm saying. Unless, of course, I lost you in the last few minutes. So it was a really interesting process to go through and take the information that I had and the, the thing that I wanted to say and restructure it and move it around and make sure it functioned as a story about people. Um, because you have to empathize with your audience, but you also have to empathize with the people in the story because your audience will empathize with them. If you can tell someone a story about a person in an engaging and interesting way, it helps people to connect with it. Because that's what we do as people. We tell each other stories and rumors and, and exciting, thrilling, dramatic things that happen to people we know or things that happen in the news. Those are things that we tell each other because we've been doing it for thousands of years. That's how we're built. That's how we exchange information. Part of it is survival. We want to know how to avoid danger. How do I avoid that thing happening to me? Or how do I get that thing to happen to me? How do I get that good fortune? It's that yin and yang. It's that balance of good fortune and bad fortune. And, and stories tell us that. And stories help us to understand what people have done in their lives that have allowed them to get that to that place and what I can do to do that. So that's how I believe people engage with stories really well and that's something that I want to try and make sure I relate as much as possible. I think if you do it too much, it, it ends up feeling, your entire project feels like a documentary and I think you might get a bit of fatigue about hearing the, the next dramatic story about a person and I think you get that when you look at the news sometimes is that there's always another dramatic story about something that's happened to someone and how the world needs to come to their aid and support them and save them even though it was their own fault uh, news organizations love that kind of content because they're able to milk it because it's drama it's it's excitement it's 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 this outcome that you want people to empathize with and, and, and talk about because they connect to it, because it's something they can relate to. Uh, so for me, having this massive database and this massive load of um, business and banking and financial information to share with people isn't engaging, because it doesn't tell a story. And you can tell a story, but by doing this course, I really put people at the center of that story. It's that journey that someone has gone on and what they've experienced, which you visualize in your mind and you empathize with. You've got to get to the heart of the story. And I think journalists are really good at that. Um, perhaps too good sometimes, because they'll go and talk to someone and get their story about how they've experienced an event or a, or a situation, and it's too soon. It's too raw, 
they haven't asked for permission, they haven't gone through the right channels, and they end up exploiting a person for a fresh, bleeding, gritty, dramatic story when you actually could have been a bit more sensitive to that person's situation and and the, the situation that's just unfolded. When you work in the news, your product is the news. You always need more product, you always need to get it out faster, it always needs to be exciting, if it bleeds, it leads. All those traditional um, things that we hear about, about news are true in that respect. And news organizations that rely on sales of um, advertising and print uh, are struggling a lot because it's difficult to continue to sell newspapers when people already looked at the news on their mobile before they even went to work. So that was the thing that I was thinking about the most, that it's important to understand what journalists do to capture a story and, and get to the heart of it by talking to people and how those people have been affected by the story. But at the same time, I think it's important to have that distance and make sure that you're behaving appropriately. Because especially for a corporation, you can't go around um, pushing people to tell you a story because that's, um, that's not fair. And you know, I know that journalists can be a bit pushy like that sometimes. So anyway, that was a really long um, sort of explanation, but it's been a really good experience um, to do the course and I got a lot out of it. And um, it's taught me to be braver about telling a story about a person. Because in the past, I was like, oh, it's gonna be too touchy-feel, it's gonna feel weird. But now I understand that the importance of that is if you tell the story about a person and frame it around a person and their experience, your audience will be moved by it. And if you're storytelling for influence, you have to move people. And the only thing that really moves a person is a story about another person. You can, If you tell a story about people, a group of people, it's harder to identify with an entire group. You've got to get a story about one person. And then it makes sense. I can relate to that person. I can relate to the experience. I can relate to them. And that's how it works. And so that's been a really cool um, thing to acknowledge and, and to understand. Um, so this was a bit of an extended uh, video. I have no idea if that actually uh, recorded effectively. Uh, but this is just a battery test to see what the drain is like on these new batteries for the Canon S120. And I'm very late for a movie. So I hope you have a good night. And I'm uh, going to press stop now. See ya.